many optimization questions are word problems where you have to find the equations yourselves. I want to show you some examples here where you don't have to find the equations, the equations are already given to you so that you can get some practice of solving these questions before you tackle the harder word problems. All right, you have to know that word problems in optimization have the same kind of structure as these questions where you have a target to maximize or minimize and you have some equation called the constraint. Okay? And always the steps are first solve the equation or the constraint for one variable. So let's say we solve for y and then uh, once you solve for the equation for the y and then you plug it into the target function to make the target function as a function of a single variable and then you use calculus to figure out the critical numbers and find the minimum or maximum. Okay. So we have x plus y equals to 8, subtract x both sides, and you end up with y equals to 8 minus x. So that's step one. Then step two is to uh, plug in uh, into target function, function, and find critical numbers. Okay, that's step two where you have y equals to 8 minus x, so you plug it in here, you have x squared plus 2 times 8 minus x, which is equal to x squared plus 16 minus 2x. And that's actually a very simple quadratic function. So uh, you can even use the completing the square method to find the uh, minimum. Uh, but since uh, the purpose here is to use calculus, let's just say f of x is this function and we're trying to find its minimum first by finding the critical number 2x minus 2 set that equal to 0 that gives you x equal to 1 that's the only critical number right and then if you pick a number after 1 say 2 and 0 before 1 and you plug in here, if you plug in 0, you get f prime of 0 equal to negative 2. So f prime is negative. And f prime of 2, 2 times 2 minus 2 would be 2, so it's positive. So that makes your function f decrease and then increase, right? Making uh, this critical number 1 indeed a, mi a, a minimum, right? So we know that uh, from, from this first derivative test that f of 1 is minimum and now all you have to do is to calculate f of 1 what's f of 1 it's uh, you plug in 1 here so it's 1 squared plus 16 minus 2 times 1 which is uh, 16 minus 2 is 14 plus 1 that's 15 so the answer is 15 now, you have to be a little careful when you write the answer. Sometimes they might ask for this. Find the x and y that will make x squared plus 2y minimum if x plus y equals 8. In that case, uh, you not only have to find the value of x, which we found out to be 1, but you have to plug that back into uh, here to figure out the value of y. And by doing that, you have to give the value of x and y. But here, it's only asking for the value of x squared plus 2y. So in that case, it's the value of this function that's important, and therefore the answer is 15. Okay, let's try a similar question, slightly more challenging. Uh, again, you have an equation, which we call the constraint. This will be the constraint. And uh, x plus 2y is something that we try, we're trying to maximize. So x plus 2y will be our target. And as usual, we will take this 
equation x squared plus y squared equals to 4 and solve for y. And uh, what you have to be careful here is uh, because we're trying to maximize, uh, we want this y to be positive, right? If, x, if y is negative, then uh, you can't get something maximum, right? Uh, so we, we only take the positive one. We take y equals to positive square root of 4 minus x squared because we're trying to find the maximum. If the question was find the minimum value of x plus 2y, we would have taken the, the negative, okay? Then you would get the negative. Uh, in that case, uh, you would find that x also has to be negative too. But here, to get the positive, uh, we will need x and y to be both uh, in uh, the first quadrant, or x and y has to be positive, okay? All right. Now we plug that and hit plug that into the target function. Once you solve the equation, the constraint for y, we plug that into the target function. You get x plus two times square root of four minus x squared. That's going to be our function that we're trying to maximize. Okay, so we're trying to find the maximum. Uh, that's a little more annoying to differentiate. Uh, it's not impossible. Just remember that uh, square root of x prime is 1 over 2 radical x, and therefore, if you use a chain rule, you can differentiate this without much problem. So if you differentiate x, it's 1, and then uh, plus 2 times, if you differentiate this using the chain rule first, differentiate the outside function, and then make a copy of the inside function, and differentiate, right? 2, 2 cancels, and here's what we get. You get 1 plus 1 over square root of 4 minus x squared times 4 differentiates to 0, negative x squared differentiates to negative 2x. Okay, and now I want this to be equal to 0. Let's see what that means. Uh, so, and the reason I make this into, into zero is because I'm looking for the critical numbers, right? We know that a function is maximized or minimized uh, at the critical numbers. So, uh, and sometimes at, at the endpoints, but uh, right now we're not so clear about what the endpoints are. Uh, so we will just use this. Actually, we do know what the endpoints are because uh, you, you know that this is a circle, right? x squared plus y squared equals to 2 squared, so that's a circle of radius 2. And therefore, the max value of x will be 2, minimum value of x will be negative 2. So we know that we're trying to maximize this function on the interval negative 2 to positive 2. Uh, but uh, if you plug in 2 or negative 2, well, you can't, you can't maximize with x being negative, so if I make positive 2, then what happens is that uh, you just get 2 as the maximum value. So let's just keep that in mind. But uh, more likely, what, what's going to happen is that uh, once we find the critical number and get the, uh, do, do the first derivative test, it will be apparent that uh, this critical number has to be the absolute maximum. So let's just do that, OK? Uh, all right. So. What we're going to do is, let's first simplify this before we set equal to 0. So it's like 1 minus 2x over square root of 4 minus x squared. And uh, we need this to equal to 0. So we want this to equal to 0. So I add this to the other side, and we're trying to solve this equation. 1 minus 2x over, uh, 1 equals to 2x over square root of 4 minus x squared. So that's, that's what we get after adding this to the other side. And uh, since it gets getting messier, I'll just uh, go to a new page. Uh, remember, 1 equals to 2x over 4 minus x squared square root. All right, so let's see. Let's just delete everything. OK, so we have 
square root 1 minus 4 minus x squared is on the bottom 2x equals to 1. That was our equation. So I'm going to multiply everything by square root of 4 minus x squared, which cancels, and you get 2x equals to square root of 4 minus x squared. Now square both sides. That's how you get rid of the square root. Okay? And when you do this, be sure to put parentheses because uh, uh, when you square both sides, you have to square the entire side. You can't just square a part of it, okay? So you have 4 minus x squared equal to 4x squared. Add the x squared both sides, and you get 4 equals to 5x squared. So x squared equals to 4 over 5, which gives you, after taking the square root, it will be plus or minus square root of 4 over 5 and uh, again we're just looking for the positive value just because we're trying to maximize so that's going to be uh, so that's going to say x equals to square root of 4 over 5 square root of 4 is 2 square root of 5 is square root of 5 but we should rationalize the denominator so that gives you uh, 2 radical 5 over 5 after multiplying by square root of 5 top and bottom it rationalizes to this okay good that's our critical number and uh, so if I put the critical number on the number line 2 radical 5 over 5 and let's choose a number before this I think I like the test point 0 and then uh, the maximum value uh, for the derivative I mean it's it's not so here's some dilemma here uh, I can't pick 2 because uh, let's write down the derivative because we have to plug that in there so derivative is this right 1 minus 2x over so f prime of x is let's not write it here f prime of x is equal to 1 minus 2x over square root of 4 minus x squared so this function is not defined at 2 because that's going to make the denominator equal to 0. And uh, so I need something that's bigger than this. And I think, let's see, square root of 5 is about 2.2. Oh, so this is actually less than 5. So, oh, good. So 1 is actually after this. So we're going to pick the two test points as 0 and 1. Uh, it's very important to pick a number bigger than 2 radical 5 over 5, okay? So, uh, yeah, so I, I know that 1 is bigger than this. Well, how do I know? Well, that's because uh, this number is square root of 4 over 5, right? 4 over 5 is less than 1, so square root of 4 over 5 should be less than 1. So I know that this 1 should be on the right side, okay? Now we plug it into f prime, this, this number here f prime of 0 would be just, this will be 0, so it will just give you 1, so f prime will be positive here, okay? And f prime of 1 would be 1 minus 2 times 1 over uh, square root of 4 minus 1 squared, so it's uh, 1 minus 2 over square root of 3. Now, uh, 2 is bigger than square root of 3 because 2 is square root of 4, right? So we, uh, we're not really interested in the actual value of this. We only need to know whether this is positive or negative, but because 2 over radical 3 is bigger than 1, I know that this is negative, okay? So now it must be negative, so we know that the function must be increasing and then decreasing, which means that at x equals to 2 radical 5 over 5, so at x equals to 2 radical 5 over 5, f of x is maximum. Okay, because it increased and falls down. So this is the place where f must be maximum. OK, so now what remains is to actually plug, in, plug this in to the function f of x, f of 2 radical 5 
over 5. We just need to know the value. That was the question. Which is this plus 2 times square root of 4 minus 2 radical 5 over 5 squared. Okay, so I took the function value. Uh, this is our function and plug in 2 radical 5 over 5 and got this which is uh, 2 radical 5 over 5 plus 2 times well that's uh, we know that the square of this is 4 over 5 right so that's going to be 4 minus 4 over 5 and let's see 20 16 okay Looks like I need to calculate more. Yeah, it's a messy calculation, but uh, we, will, we will need a new page. All right. So let's continue here. What we need is f of two radical five over five, which is two radical five over five plus 2 times square root of 4 is 20 over 5, right? Minus 4 over 5, which gives you 2 radical 5 over 5 plus 2 times square root of 20 minus 4 is 16, so 16 over 5. 16 is 4, so it's 2 times 4 divided by square root of 5 plus 2 radical 5. And uh, although it's, it looks very messy, uh, we're almost there because uh, if I rationalize this second fraction by multiplying square root of 5 top and bottom, we see that the two fractions now have a common denominator. And it's like 2 radical 5 over 5. 2 times 4 is 8, so 8 radical 5 over 5. So 2 plus 8, that gives you 10 radical 5 over 5. So that's the answer. All right, that was a really hard calculation, okay? But uh, still, uh, it's less challenging than having to solve a word problem where you have to figure out the target and the constraint from the word problem.